We're here today for lunch at Sushi and Ava, one of the hardest to book seats in Copenhagen. That's because there's only eight counter seats. So today we decided to book them all for the Hungries, our food club. Chef Mats Badefeld is French trained. He also worked in Barcelona and at Hennekerkeby Crow. And then he fell in love with Japanese cuisine. So he decided to move to Tokyo and learn from the best before moving back to Copenhagen and opening his own omakase restaurant. My name is Mas Bettefeld and this is Sushi Anaba. I want to make it quite minimalistic, a mix between the, the Japanese and the Scandinavian. I wanted to have a good chair that you sit in, and I want to lower the floor so you can sit in a good chair. The interior at Sushi Anaba is very zen, almost like a food spa, with some incredible design details. The ceramics are handcrafted by Mats's fiance and the stunning light fixture is designed by Studio Anna Lucca. And of course, there's a Japanese toilet. In the back of the restaurant, we have a, a small private room, a small private tatami room, where we do service as well. It's good for, for small groups. So if you're sitting four, you can sit and uh, have a, a small talk together. It's a traditional way of, of dining out in, in Japan as well. Sushi Anaba is a one-man show and Mats has had a lot of tools customized to help him work. Before the meal, he prepares as much as possible in order to be ready to serve the guests in front of him. He has a handcrafted wooden box where he stores his fish, and he has also brought a lot of materials back from Japan, including vintage ceramics, a brush to apply soy sauce, and specially designed sushi knives that took three months to make. And of course, he has a traditional shark skin grater to grind fresh wasabi. If I needed to learn it the traditional way, I needed to go to Japan. A good friend of mine had the contact to a Japanese guy in, the, in Tokyo, Hiroyuki Sato. And I went there as a trial and he said if I liked, I could uh, work with him for a new uh, restaurant he was doing. So in the end of 17, I moved to Japan. I think you need to know the basic of a cuisine before you can add on your own style. So I went there to learn how to cut the fish the traditional way, how to salt the fish the traditional way, and how to cure. And after that, how to, to do the rice, to do the soup, and all of these basic elements that is in a, a Japanese uh, sushi experience. And we opened up the restaurant here, Sushi Anaba at 19. Small Japanese uh, sushi restaurant doing, trying to do the traditional Edomeo style of sushi with local and uh, Scandinavian products. The new dish is uh, Danish sardines from uh, Skyrak. It's very uncommon that we have sardines in the, in the Danish water, but sometimes they're coming in. So they've been uh, lightly smoked over hay with a little bit of fresh wasabi and lemon on the side. Normally, you start with a few utsumami, it's called small dishes, where it's very clean taste. And then you build up with a, a few nigiris afterwards. You always start with a very clean taste of nigiri. And um, then, for my personal, we go over to the sweet, like the shrimps, the squids, maybe if there's some uh, trout uh, in, in season, or maybe some scallop. And then we add a, a few dishes again. So we gaining up the level. And after the dishes, we're going over to the blue skin fish. It could be herring, it could be mackerel, it could be garfish, and then some innards, like monkfish liver, sea urchin, maybe some grilled fish. And then we're building up again with a few dishes. And then we're going to the tuna. The way that I learned about sushi rice and the way I like it is to use a dark vinegar. It's called akasu and it's made from the sake leaves. It's stored and it's uh, fermented for 20 years before they release it. And that gives a very rustic flavor. I think it's very, very close to the Danish rye bread. Right here at Sushi Anaba, we have two drinking options from like menus, we have a non-alcoholic and then we have an alcoholic. The alcoholic is, is based on the champagne by the day. Normally it's, it's possible to choose from three different kinds of producers. And then we move on to the sake. 
And the sake for me is built up in the same way of, uh, of the menu. So we start with a very light, super smooth, nearly watery, and the cleanness of the sake. Then we move a little bit more on the acidity, the umami, the sweetness, the fruitiness. Then there's coming most of the time something uh, unpasteurized, maybe sometimes unfiltered. And then we end normally with something that is aged, because I think aged sake is going very well with the heavy flavors. Yeah, so the next dish is um, the same rice that we use for nigiri, just uh, freshly steamed. On top of it, it's a special selection that we got made from uh, the Royal Belgium Caviar. It's a, a mix between Oshetra and uh, Beri sturgeon. The salt is a little bit higher than, uh, than normal to, to, to work with the white rice. And then you have um, a quail egg yolk on top. I think uh, the style of sushi anaba is, is, is my style of a mix between the tr traditional French and the, the Japanese cuisine. Most of the fish that we use is, is generally from the west coast of Denmark and then a little bit of from North Zealand. It's a small boat that's going out in, in the morning, coming in and in the afternoon and then we get it obviously in the, the next day in the morning. But the local fish in Denmark is some of them is, is quite similar to the Japan. It's just instead of taking the, the traditional fish, maybe take a, a similar fish or like a, a sister fish, like a, a family. But the, the, the fish in, in general is, is just the white fish, the blue skin fish, the red meat fish. And then you have the clams and the, the cockles and the, the shellfish. When we work with tuna, it's super important that I need to work with very good um, fishermen and then we buy a whole fish. I want to secure that we get all of the parts and I want to secure that we getting the freshness like the best. So we always buy a whole tuna. The one you had was uh, 194 kilos and we try to serve as many parts as possible, starting with the, with, with the back piece called akami. Then we may be serving a piece of the, the ribs, the chutoro. And then we change in between it's uh, otoro or kamatoro that we serve. But we always try to serve three different, so people can get thoughts of a fish also can have different cuts. Because mostly people just think a fish is just a fish. It's the same meat all around the fish. We always end the meal with, I'm not saying a trash can of a soup, but instead of throwing all of the bones away, we, we, we cook them in a traditional Japanese soup, uh, owang. So it's made from the bones from the fish, the shellfish, the shrimp's head. Then we add two different kinds of miso. And after the soup, we're ending with the tamago, traditional uh, omelette, and we make it with the uh, langoustines and honey. Then we bake it traditionally, and it's called sumiyaki. And sumiyaki is where you bake it with uh, only charcoal as the only heating sauce. It's baked in one layer, and it's baked super, super slowly. It's very, very important that there's no bubbles. When you make the tamago, it's the way you can see if the restaurant is a good sushi restaurant. If it's not a good tamago, it's definitely not a good trained sushi chef. If you like our work, support us on Patreon, where we also have a food community called The Hungries. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more food and travel videos. And be sure to follow us on Instagram at Andrews Husa and Carnivore. Thanks for watching.